Hey, going to the beach? Well, listen up! This phenomenon takes hundreds of lives each year, but only 5% of people know about it. Any experienced lifeguard will warn you about a deadly phenomenon that claims the lives of more than 100 American beachgoers every year. In fact, about 80% of all rescues that lifeguards make have a connection to this danger. No, it's not sharks or poisonous jellyfish or anything like that. The most treacherous thing that can happen to you in the ocean is a totally natural phenomenon called a rip current. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about it in order to stay safe in ocean waters. But before we do that, take this opportunity to hit that big red button and subscribe to the Bright Side of Life. While you're at it, ring the notification bell so you'll always be the first to see our daily updates. What is a rip current, and how is it so deadly? A rip is basically a strong current on the surface of the ocean that flows away from the shore. Different factors can cause a rip current to form. For instance, if wave heights change too rapidly, a rip will usually appear. This type of current can show up near piers, boating docks, and groins. Not the bodily kind, but the structures built to protect the shore from erosion that go by the same name. Also, when there are some breaks in sandbars, water returns to the ocean through these channels. This usually happens near the beach and creates extremely strong rip currents that can stay in the same place for weeks or even months. But in any case, the main ingredient for all rip currents is breaking waves. If there are no breaking waves, you don't have to worry about any rips. The main danger of a rip is that it flows seaward away from the shore, so it can easily pull unaware swimmers with it. How dangerous a rip can be depends on the weather, the shape of the beach, tides, and other factors. Average rip currents move at a speed of about 1-2 to two feet per second. But if a current is particularly strong, it can pull you out into the open ocean at an astonishing 8 feet per second. Even the best Olympic swimmer out there wouldn't be able to get back to the shore against such a mighty current. What's worse, rips tend to gain speed dramatically over a short period of time. A lot of beachgoers who can't swim prefer to stay in waist-deep water because they feel safe when their feet are touching the bottom. But they're no safer from rip currents because a rip can easily sweep you off your feet and yank you away from the shore. And if you can't swim, this can end tragically. There are all kinds of misconceptions surrounding rip currents. One of the most popular is that they'll pull you underwater. But in reality, a rip won't drown you. It'll simply carry you away from shore. Whew, that's a relief, I guess. Another widespread myth is that if you get caught in a rip current, it'll keep pulling you out into the ocean forever. Again, not quite. Yes, a rip can pull you quite far into open waters, but even in the worst-case scenario, you won't find yourself miles away from the shore. You'll probably just have to swim a pretty long way to get back to the beach. It's also entirely possible, and quite probable, that the rip itself will bring you back. And that's because 90% of rip currents move in gigantic circles. This means that they flow from the shallow waters to the open ocean and then back again. There's also a misconception that if you don't see a rip current, you don't need to worry. But these things can totally form out of the blue, like if several waves coming from different directions crash into each other. Boom, you now have a riptide. So if the beach you're visiting is infamous for rip currents, always be extra cautious. How to identify a rip current? Going off that last note, in order to be extra careful and safe at the beach, you need to know how to spot a rip current. It often looks like a calm patch of water between breaking waves, which at first glance seems like the best place to enter the water. But don't let the tranquility deceive you, because you might inadvertently pick the most dangerous place to swim. The following signs can also indicate the presence of a rip current. Some area has a deeper, darker color than the rest of the water. There's a break in the coming waves. There's seaweed and foam moving toward the shore from the ocean. You see an area of choppy water. What to do if you've been caught in a rip current? When a person gets caught in a rip, their actions determine their fate, period. The first thing you absolutely must do is stay calm. 
panicking does not help. In fact, it ends up costing people their lives when they're overcome by it. Second, you need to conserve energy. Do not attempt to swim against the rip current toward the shore. Even the weakest rips move faster than you can swim. If you try to fight the current, you'll just expend all your energy and strength, which will lead to tragic consequences. As we already mentioned, the vast majority of rip currents move in huge circles. They typically flow 160 to 300 feet offshore and then come back around. But still, associate professor Rob Brander, whose field of research is rip currents and beach hazards and safety, measured rips that went up to 1,300 feet away from the shore. Dr. Brander also established that there isn't just one overarching escape strategy from a rip current. You should take into consideration the conditions and the rip features. The best thing you can do is stay afloat. Remember to hold your hands up to get the lifeguard's attention and signal that you need help. After that, you have two options. If the rip is circulating, it will eventually bring you back either to a sandbank or to breaking waves that'll take you back to shore. It could also just take you seaward until there are no more breaking waves. At that point, the current ceases to exist, and you can wait for rescuers or even swim back to the shore. Just make sure you're swimming around the rip. The second option will only work for really good swimmers. If you're one of them, you can try to swim parallel to the beach to get out of the current. In some cases, it's possible to break free this way. But this is still a subject of ongoing debate. Dr. Jamie McMahon, a professor of oceanography, was once caught in a rip current himself. Well, he wasn't really caught, but put himself in one at his own free will. As a rip current expert at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, he decided to research rip currents from the inside and record a safety video for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. At one point, while he was trapped in the current, he tried to follow life-saving guidelines and swim parallel to the shore, but realized he couldn't do it because the rip wasn't giving in. Dr. McMahon is very experienced with this sort of stuff, which is why he wasn't in any immediate danger. But the situation made him think. Perhaps trying to reach the beach swimming parallel to it isn't the best escape strategy. He started his own research using GPS devices to track rip currents in France, England, and the US. On top of that, he himself has eagerly jumped into rips all over the globe. Talk about dedication to your work! Among the great number of currents he studied, only 10-20% to did not return back to the shore. The rest of them moved in circles. So if you get trapped in a rip, you can't really know where it's flowing. Therefore, swimming parallel to the beach leaves you with a 50-50 chance that you'll be struggling against the hazardous current. The conclusions he made based on his research are certainly different from what most people are told. According to Dr. McMahon, when caught in a rip current, you should just relax and go with the flow. He says that chances are it'll bring you back to the shore in a few minutes. McMahon's research has definitely sparked a number of heated discussions within the rip current research community. And while his findings are used in Australia to teach people how to survive dangerous rips, in some countries, his conclusions and recommendations are ignored or even considered potentially fatal. In any case, the main reason why people lose their lives when stuck in a rip current comes down to panic. When they find themselves suddenly being pulled away from the shore at a high speed, terror ensues. They start to panic, wear themselves out in the fight, and drown because of it. What you should do instead is stay calm, take control of the situation, keep afloat, weigh your options, and don't exhaust yourself. If you take these steps, you'll have a much better chance of getting out of this horrible situation alive. So, have you ever seen or been caught in a riptide? What would you do or have you done to escape one? Let us know about your experiences and opinions on the topic in the comments below. We hope this life-saving information has been useful for you, and if it has, give the video a like and send it to everyone you know. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time on The Bright Side of Life.